Ever think about who's the brain of this country? Beck and Leighton Hewitt are clearly the heart as they taught us what love really is. But the people who are setting the tone of public discourse so that we can all collectively get to the bottom of the big issues. You're probably imagining that it's some intellectual that's handsome, bespeckled, starlet-esque moustache, tweed jacket. Every time you say something stupid in front of him, he tries not to draw attention to it by looking around and saying, hmm, yes, perhaps. Maybe you're imagining Nathan Basley from Behind the News. Well, it's neither. It's in fact this bag. Oh wait, sorry, that's the wrong bag. It's this bag, am I right? Eh? Second in command to that bag though is not as scary as Nathan Basley's mid-2000s haircut, but it is up there. It's these charmless men. Can we, can we just zoom in on that man's eyes? Can't hurt my feelings. I'm already dead inside. As we've been through before, and you can check it out at Friendly Geordies The Facts if you'd like, but the Institute of Public Affairs think tank is the Liberal Party's brain, because what, you think Jason Wood is coming up with all the intellectual bangers, do you? Last book I read was the ultimate boxing quiz book. I, uh, didn't do as well as I thought I would, to be honest. Corporations hire the beady eyes to come up with a bunch of evil policies that the Liberals blindly implement, as they ooze into every ABC show, every AM radio show, Sky News, Nine Fairfax, pretending they independently came to the exact same conclusion every time. No, no, the, the reason, reason we, we care so much about, about lifting regulations, regulations on sand mining is because it's an attack on freedom. Yeah, okay, so uh, that's your argument for everything. Yeah, yeah either that, that or something vague about competition. competition. No competition for us, though. The Borg mine has drowned out every other opinion. It is quite dystopian how Australians used to know the names of actual experts that they're on television so much. But over time, they've all been replaced with these interchangeable off-the-shelf cigarette spokesmen. As look at that. Don't you just look at that and think, well, they're 40-year-old nerds, so I guess they're intellectuals. Anyway, they currently have their sights set on the world's last stronghold of rib skinny jeans, Queensland. Queensland. No, that's unfair. Queensland isn't just the Gold Coast, which I'm sure to everyone from Western Sydney watching this, news to me, Stitch. But this is important. I need you to notice this pattern because this is how corporate Australia sinks Labor governments. It's by a little old strategy known as death by a thousand cuts. They make up a thousand bullshit stories. No one believes all of them, but everyone believes some of them, creating campaigns around very micro-targeted little niches. You know, things women whose Facebook profile is a poodle would be into. Men whose Facebook Facebook profile as a car. I'd say they'd be a match made in heaven if I wasn't absolutely certain they were married at some point and are now divorced. Anyway, basically, every day in Queensland, the press will come out and say some shit that would be obscene if it wasn't so boring about a new grassroots group are demanding that the Queensland Premier bring back the chin head show. Bring back chin heads! Bring back chin heads! But the Premier is saying, not by the hair of her chinny chin chin. Fuck you, that was a bad bit like if you agree. Then the next day, a new grassroots group is demanding the Premier allow them to put a beanie on Brisbane Tower during winter. It's cold up there! Over and over again, so it gives off the impression that, ooh, can the Premier do anything right? Look at the daily revolts in Brisbane of the press doing an extreme close-up of this tiny gathering. Is that even enough people for a party? They're all pretty much wearing my shirt. And so will I to stand in proud solidarity with these fishermen. That was at the ABC. I tell you, if anything, they prove that the revolution won't be televised, but they will televise a couple of dozen pissed off fishermen thinking they're bringing about the revolution. You go back. You go back and look at whatever these concerned citizens are spouting that day, and you'll inevitably come across an IPA press release with virtually word for word arguments these grassroots citizens are spouting in the papers, which, wow, what a coincidence, eh? What a coincidence that corporate Australia is that in touch with the little guy on the street that they're both on the same wavelength down to a grammatical T. No wonder they get all the press coverage they get, as everyone on Earth apparently is thinking about the plight of gillnet fishermen on a very small section of Australia's coastline. Look at this. Bam! IPA, Sky News, Courier Mail, The Australian, all having a synchronised hissy fit. So much airtime devoted to one of Sky News' latest obsessions. The plight of the old sea dog. We've been fishing these waters since before you was in diapers. And me father before that, and his father before that. I do things the old-fashioned way. Mm, like a, an old wooden boat with a rod and a reel? Well, 
Yeah, kind of. More like a virtually invisible plastic net two kilometers long that uh, catches and kills every earthly creature it crosses its path. Dolphins, sea turtles, dugongs. But, uh, yeah, basically a run and reel. Yeah, sure. I mean... Yeah. That's why the Premier has to go, because the Queensland government decided to ban one of the most destructive ways you could possibly fish, gillnet fishing, which is not a massive industry. It's 240 licenses that they're rescinding. It's not like they're phasing out Kmart. You'd think they were from all the coverage. All this airtime devoted to this concerned father and daughter fishing duo, which... I swear that's about 50% of the gillnet fishers right there on screen. The government's giving them an unbelievably good compensation package to fuck off. I wouldn't. I'd just make them start a breeding program to replace all the dugongs they murdered where they're forced to breed with the dugongs. And look at them, they'd probably love it. Bruh. $160 million is what they're getting in compensation. That is a lot of support for these license holders. I'm pretty sure no government has ever been so generous to any industry ever. Remember when Holden closed down? Holden! Dave Hughes' old slogan should have been Holden means a great deal to Australia, just not the Liberals, they really fucked him over. They didn't get shit. And yet the news report for the Gillnet Fishers Compensation Package, how's this? It's a drop in the ocean. <sighs> Look, it's a good pun. It is a very good pun, you've got to give him that. But the only way that you could make that pun is if this $160 million compensation package was just a drop in the ocean. <laughs> If they're millionaires, not these everyday Aussie battlers that are getting portrayed here. Millionaires from dragging in all sorts of drowned, highly sentient sea life. Hey! This isn't mackerel. Having a whinge because they're being moved on from, are you ready for this? Just 2.6% of the entire East Coast's wild caught fishing catchments. And yet here they are on the news. Parrotfish, snapper, it's going to disappear. You can't farm those. Oh. However, will we have fish and chips again when we have just 97.4% of the East Coast's fishing staying exactly the same way as it is? No marine scientists asked, no policy makers asked about what's involved in this story, no. Just a bunch of guys with this fish shirt being fed think tank bile, and that's the press's point. Agree with it or don't, fuck sea mammals, the real victims are. Fuck off! It's easier to catch him with the Hyper Death Net 6000. That's right. Fuck specifically sea mammals. Until it comes to wind turbines, and they're all about saving the whales. Hmm. It's almost like Sky News doesn't give a shit about anything they say and just say whatever gets them paid. No, no, perish the thought, as here we have the bowling ball himself. So passionate about saving the whales that he wants to, yeah, bowl down the bird killers. The damage to landscapes, to farming areas, and to native wildlife habitats is gonna be immense, isn't it? Yes, Chris, yes. Your answers of this and this have no ecological footprint at all, as after all, what is today's open cut coal mine other than tomorrow's billabong ready to go for where giant kangaroos re-evolve a giant thirst? What he leaves out of all his stats is the main one, which is that 2% of land area within a wind farm is taken up by actual wind turbines. And yet all of a sudden, Sky News. Sky. I'm sorry, but that is simply an unjustifiable amount of environmental destruction. I don't know if you know this, but there's no planet B, okay? Well, there is. It's the place I get my head shine, but you get the sentiment. You go over to the IPA and, oh, what do you know? Sky News is once again copying their homework. But what these projects mean for these communities is construction disruptions, environmental impacts, farming limitations, and the erosion of property rights and control of who can enter their own land. And we've brought you interviews and stories from right around the country of farmers and tourist operators worried about renewable energy projects and transmission lines destroying their livelihoods and ruining the landscape. While covering the massive sporadic ground swells spouting across the nation naturally, spontaneous human eruptions. Wow. There must be the equivalent of your year 12 graduation year there, 120 everyday Aussies who have had enough of all the cheap energy. Just everyday Aussies with lived experience about upsetting and all our bloody beautiful red tailed cockies. We're losing all our birds. Jesus, listen to that squawk. Would you be shocked at all if you found out that that was a cockatoo pretending to be a person? You know, what's very interesting about that talking point that you hear over and over again is wind turbines kill 0.269th 
of a bird per gigawatt hour. A gigawatt powers 750,000 homes. So it kills about one bird per three million homes. You know how many birds fossil fuel kills per gigawatt hour? Close to 10. And that's why you should keep gillnet fishing going, by the way, that kills fucking millions of animals that it shouldn't. Can you imagine being Chris Kenny waking up every morning? Yep, can't wait to start the day and lie about things no one cares about. What a life! Exactly the same as youth crime. Statistics on all crime across the state of Queensland, including youth crime, all down. The only statistic that's going up is news reports on youth crime. Remember the green shirts? Who have had enough of being told to put just enough fertilizer on their crops? No, they want to lose money by putting three times as much as they need just to kill coral. They're messing with a traditional way of life. Here's this grassroots organization of aggrieved millionaires getting yet another dream run in the press, yet again regurgitating IPA talking points. The question, however, is why? Why is there such a concerted effort to make it seem like absolutely nothing Queensland Labor's doing is the right move? Which Let's just go through that list, shall we? I don't think that the general public, if they knew the full story, would think that Queensland Labor stopping native species from going extinct is a bad thing. Installing renewable energy is a bad thing. Making sure that not just youth crime, crime in general is going down, that's a bad thing. Stopping the Great Barrier Reef from dying, also a bad thing. Why does the press routinely bring up these issues, not give them a proper right of reply, going out of their way to pretending like they're doing a bad job on those exact issues. Death by a thousand cuts. All leading back to this deep cut, which is that Anastasia Palaszczuk dared okay Queensland Labor's green jobs and energy plan. This is their Kevin Rudd mining tax. This is why the press have pushed the button on Palaszczuk and made her approval plummet, because they are implementing one of the world's most ambitious energy transition plans. I've got a video on that coming out soon, but basically this is a $62 billion plan to make the state of Queensland a state-of-the-art energy grid that the public owns entirely instead of the coal companies. That's what all this negative press is about. They are furious that they're about to face a world where they lose their monopoly on energy distribution. And just to add insult, Anastasia Palaszczuk has the gall to make them pay for this energy transition. That's where the royalties from the coal are going. She increased the coal tax in Queensland, so they're paying for it. Or rather, the people of Queensland are finally getting some of the money for their own resources for once. And the coal companies can't have that. Queensland Labor's got to go. Out comes the cigarette spokesman to install this cigarette spokesman lookalike who will absolutely see the crime rate go back up. You mark my words, his only plan really is to scrap a bunch of rehabilitation programs Queensland Labor introduced. Scrap the coal tax, that means a bunch of poverty reduction programs that Queensland Labor introduced. Also go, bring back Queensland to the old dugong killing, river polluting, land clearing Queensland we all know and love. But for now, just know, that all these news stories that you see of a state on the edge of revolt, that is all manufactured by these pricks. And they don't do it for nothing either. Someone's paying them. I'd say for their soul, but when you look at them again, they clearly didn't have one of those to begin with. That's why I need you to tell people about the pattern that they are seeing in the news and why it's happening, which is that Anastasia Palaszczuk wants Queensland to have a state-of-the-art energy grid that the people of Queensland own. That's her big crime. Speaking of crimes, it would be an absolute crime if you didn't come and see my live show in Adelaide. A crime against good times had by all. See you next week. Fuck, Fuck renewables. renewables. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Wait. They're good. They're good.